Hi guys! Prehistoric Painting coming at you with a how-to video on painting salamander green. Mainly the armor pieces uh, for the Primaris salamanders. I uh, picked up a little green technique and I wanted to show you guys. Um, so here we have a f aggressor with the flame gauntlets because of course I'm a salamander so I'm going to have oh, the flame gauntlets. I uh, have him primed up in gray sear. Uh, if you notice, I don't have all of his pieces because those back pieces right there kind of get in the way of some of the back parts, and I want to make sure I have good coverage. They're relatively easy to paint back or um, glue back on, so I'm not too worried about it. So the colors we're going to be doing will be just the green today. I'm going to be showing off the green on the armor, and I'll, I'll eventually show this whole model to you guys when I finish up the painting. But we're just going to do the green because uh, I got some comments on how it's pretty. And it's a, actually a pretty easy process and it's kind of fun. Uh, so I have my brushes. I'm using an Army Painter Regiment brush, a dry brush. And then my paints were not too heavy load on paints. We have Wog Flesh, Warp Stone Glow, Moot Green, and for the shade, Bale Tan Green. Uh, I have the base out here. I don't really need it, but I just want to show you like what the base will be on this guy. Uh, if you want to look, I, did, I didn't do the best job cleaning up some of the mold lines here on the, the elbow or the uh, knee pad. So that's, that's bad on my part. It's, I should have done a little bit more filing, but I didn't want to get too aggressive with it. I thought I was already filing down too much. It's a nice primer. I get a good day for priming the other day, so I decided to get a few extra things done. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to put that stick back in his foot so I have a little bit of control. I put a little tacky tape or tacky, like... Uh, What's it called? Uh, board tape. Uh, not tape, I'm sorry, but um, tacky stuff. Literally, just like for a poster board and things like that. And then drilled a hole in his foot where you know you wouldn't see it and stuck a toothpick in so I can have a little bit of control. If you notice, I'm wearing gloves because something I've realized is that when I'm painting, I'm touching the miniature and I think the oils in my hands are actually rubbing off the paint as I paint the miniature. So I'm trying to do a little better on that front and not rubbing off the paint. So. Uh, stick that back in real quick. I'm gonna put him down. You gotta walk flesh, shake it up a little bit. And we're gonna put a heavy dose -da, right here on our wet palette. -da 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 -da. Stir around a little bit. Spin. And we're gonna get a little bit of water. And mix it around some more. Now, probably gonna need more than this, but spin. But for now, we're just going to do it. And we're actually, we're going to do multiple s layers of this paint. So I usually start front and center. And just get it on there. You just want to layer it on. Don't be too worried about being very neat or anything like that. Because we're going to go on with a second coat. You want coverage here. You don't want, uh, what's it called? Precision. I'm going to try to avoid some of the major pieces like the Aquila on his chest and the gun and like the metal parts of the gun as much of the undersuit as I can. Luckily these guys are mostly armor. So it's easy. All right. So just like that, you can do the coverage. I'll get a little closer you guys so you can see. And spread that paint around. You see it's kind of showing up a little bit blotchy, not very smooth. That's where the second coat is going to come in. And I want to skip to that part for you guys. Because I realize a lot of these videos are really long and I am semi-interesting but I'm not the most interesting person. Alright! So, we have him mostly in the swag flesh green. Now, I want to point out, look at him. He's dirty. He is not covered at all really well. It's not a very clean coat whatsoever. So, what we're going to do is do another layer on him. It's going to come out like a nice star green. So, I'll start that process. I'll show you a little bit, and then we'll jump to the finished product. Well, not finished, but the medium product. So, sorry, he is off the screen. Gonna get more of that wog flesh, put it on, 
And then we, I just like dip my uh, paintbrush in water because I have a wet palette, but I still want them to be thinned down. Do a little spinny, spin around, and just one more light coat on top. I used to be a person that would only do one coat. And I would go over like certain areas again, maybe. But I was like, ah, it's too much time. You don't need two coats. But after painting Space Marines, <laughs> the smoothness of the paint is just so much better. Like the smoothness of the color. It's just so much better after that second coat. Like it's. It's almost silly when I think like how obstinate I was. Like, ah, oh, nah, I'm wasting time. I don't need to do another coat. Another good thing about this second coat is it actually brings attention to maybe areas you missed before. Now, this guy, I did pretty good hitting all the spots I need to. But I've no on my last Primaris, I was like, oh, wait, there's a shoulder pad part I missed, or there's an armor leg part I missed. And the big thing I'm going to say, guys, with this second coat is make sure the paint does... If you, if you thin out your paints, it shouldn't matter too much, but it still is going to happen sometimes where the paint will bunch up. Let's see, like, there's a little piece in there that i got to get. The paint will kind of bunch up or pull together because it's thin. So I'll dip the water. So because it's thin, sometimes it will glop in an area, and you want to spread that out and make it look nice and smooth. Like especially in like the face mask parts, you'd want that to be spread out because you don't want to cover up any details of the face mask. Especially anything with little details, you want to make sure you are when you do the thin coat layer, you go over it, but don't just like glop it on there. Glop is the scientific term. So. There's another method you could do this in, and I've tried it, I saw it online, it does work pretty well, is using Warp Lightning Contrast Paint. I tried it on some of my Marines, it's not, it's, it's hard to tell which ones did it, but overall I like this method much better, because it just comes out smoother, I think, and you guys will see in the end product, but actually I might do a comparison, you know what, that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a comparison. So you guys can get this guy, and then I'm going to do the little warp lightning. So, make sure this video is not too long. I'm going to speed this up. Alright, so we got him done in the base wog flesh color. I just want to show you guys how much smoother that looks. Like ridiculously much smoother. So I'm a very big advocate now. If you're doing, I mean, you can do one coat. It's it's fast, it's easy, and you, if you get a decent enough lap, you know, layer on for something, it's good. But if you really want to make something look good, do two coats. Get especially on things that have flat surfaces like Space Marines, these big panels and all that. Two coats is really what you need to make it look very nice. All right. So this is one aggressor. Close my uh, wog flesh here. Now, I did pull out my Warp Lightning Contrast. And I'm going to grab my other aggressor. Da da da. This guy right here. And we are going to do the Warp Lightning on him. And for that, we are going to use a Monster. A Monster. A Monster Brush. I like this. It's kind of like using a. It's like using a large shade brush from the Citadel line. It's a little more. I'm gonna point it. So I shake up my shake up that warp line real good. Shake it up real good. Because these uh, contrast paints aren't always the best. They're good, but they tend to settle. And I put mine right from the pot. So do that. Just push a little off. And just start picking those areas out. Now you notice it's a much brighter green than we have on our guy down here. And so a big thing is spread that paint around. 
because it is going to look very uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Stripply modely. There we go. Modely. It's going to look very modeled. You don't pull it around a lot. Now, I will say, this is a good color for a salamander. Already, you're kind of seeing the green you kind of want. And probably some of you are wondering, like, well, why'd you start with such a darker base? Or the other one, you'll see why. You will see. Alright. So I think you guys got the gist of it for the the contrast paint. Make sure you spread it around. Don't let it pull in recesses too much. Because then you get like this weird chunky paintness. So, again, like I said, you guys have seen enough. I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna speed this up so that way you guys can see the rest of the painting. All right. So here we have our second aggressor with the warp lightning. I'm comparing to the other one. It's they're completely different. And one thing I don't like about the contrast paint, you notice on the legs, got real dark. And it's not too modeled. It had good coverage. Get in most areas, so it's not bad at all. Um, and did a lot of the recess shading, so that's one thing we won't have to do. This guy, we won't have to shade him with bale tan. This guy, we will have to shade. So this this process is faster, this process is slower, but I think it looks better. So this is now when we go to the shading. So we're going to shake that up. Shake, 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 you know what? We're going to take our large, or medium, sorry, medium shade brush. All right, shake it up. All right, and again for shade, I apply directly from the pot and just cover that model. You want to make sure you get those recess areas though. And if you have too much gooping like that, or mucking together, dry off your brush and just, there you go, pick it up. Just re-soak it back through. So nice, good coat. And the thing is about this is we're going to let it dry. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to stand him upright so that way the, the shade naturally pulls down. Into those some of those recesses. One of the reasons why I did this green first, too, before all, all the other colors, is because we're going to be doing that dry brushing here, and that tends to get over everything. So instead of you know doing all the colors and then dry brushing green and having weird silvery green weapons, which could be kind of cool and stuff like you have poison or whatever, but we're going for nice and neat. So we're doing this part first. And you notice I'm touching the top of my thumb and I'm realizing I'm getting some of that shade on top of the head down, so I'm gonna have to reshade that when I'm done. Make sure the shade spreads out evenly. Alright, so let's speed this up. I'm gonna Finish this off, and I get back to you guys with the finish. All right, so while our bale tan green dries, we're gonna do the wet brushing. Now you heard me—I said dry brushing earlier, but I misspoke. We'll be doing wet brushing on this guy. So basically, what it involves? It's basically dry brushing. You just take it, do your little circles, get it good on there. Rub some off, but don't rub it all off. And do a little bit, see? And now, lower oh, the stick keeps spinning. And just draw wet brush. Now, 
Now, a big thing with these ones. Let's go against the grain the best you can. You want to really look at it as you wet brush because you want to see that color change. Especially like on these legs where the mottled area is, you want that to fade in and blend in with the rest of the model. And you basically you keep doing the wet brush to have a good clean layer of this warp lightning. I'm just going to take the stick out for now. I'm going to put the stick back in so we can tell the difference between the two. This part's kind of fun because you're you're watching yourself fade these colors together. It's kind of nice, actually. So now when you dry brush, you just add that little layer on. And it's nice. The wet brushing, you see a you see something different happen almost. See, we're doing a lot more strokes than we would if we were dry brushing too. You gotta pay attention, like don't get in those creases. You still want darkened recesses. And the point of wet brushing is just to change the color more drastically than you would dry brushing. Every now and then re-up it. Do, 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 do. You want to go against the grain for the most part. So that way you still keep those recesses in. And these for the and what I like about this process is that it for your contrast paints, it cleans up that modeling that you get. Alright guys, so I'm gonna finish him off with the wet brushing and then we will go to the one that I did a more classic method on. Alright so we got him wet brushed all over if you, you can tell it's like a nice gradient of that bright uh, warp stone like darker bright it's, it's a cool like glowy green is what I call it glowy green. So you see we made all those everything's now much more uh, smooth. See so like the, there's no more blotchiness it has a neat kind of like fade into that recess area on the arms. I really like how it worked on the arms. The head worked out good. It picked up the bright areas, got the darker areas. So this guy is coming along pretty nice. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing to the... Oh, he's still a little wet. So we're going to hold on to that. We will come back to him in a second. All right, now that he is dry, we are going to... Da, do the dry brushing. Move that guy out of the way. I got left it on there because it's all the same color. Shake it up. Put it on there. Spin it around. And this one's going to be a much drastic, more drastic difference. It's going to look a lot cooler though. So again, go down. You're going to want to do multiple cults of this because your initial patches won't look the color you're going for. So 
So you can see like already that nice, that dark green really gives a good base to it and blends in nice and good. Nice and well, I guess I should say. You really tell on the head. So like you can see how like those shoulder pads are again a little green on. So if I had done those in like the gold color I want to do, you know, I've had to repaint them and everything. So doing this green first, you just now you have to be more careful with the rest of the stuff you do. So it's definitely fading in, but see it's very splotchy right now. It looks a lot like dry brush. I think I don't I think mine's not as wet as it should be. in it's a tough process to figure out like how what you want to be because you don't want to you don't want to be just like paint you want to fade in it's a weird medium that it takes a little to get used to but it has a very cool effect and kind of like naturally highlights for you so you don't have to do so much of it alright so you're kind of getting the gist of it right now I'm gonna finish him off and then we're gonna compare the models alright so here you have our guy that was originally in the wog, ba wog flesh base now we have wet brush slash dry brushed that warp stone glow onto them. And it just to me it's a more natural look. So here we have the uh, one that was done the warp lightning. And it's a little more defined I think the warp lightning. I'll give it that. Maybe this is some of the armor pieces but it does, I don't know, I like that greenish glow to the guy on the left as well. They're both good. I think it's both, both are good bases. The warp lightning Makes a very bright base, and you dry brush on the warp glow and kind of fade tones it down. It still gives it a nice, nice definition. And the dark on the uh, and the dark with the lighter with the warp sun glow looks nice as well. Now, I'm not gonna do the whole thing here. I'm gonna show you the edge highlighting. So something I don't normally do because I normally just like dry brush, but we're going to edge highlight the rest of the green. Now, what does that mean? Well, for those who do Warhammer and all things like that. Basically it means you pick out a panel and you go along the edge very carefully like that and just get the edges of those armor panels and be very careful. I'm using a small layer brush right here. This process takes time now you could also just dry brush moot green on there as well but you're gonna get that dusty look and we want nice see I got a little bit warp go stone a little there nice clean lines don't want too much paint on there you want to brace so you got way you get a good nice stroke with the brush. Another cheaty way to do it, but not cheaty, I shouldn't say another technique is use the angle of your brush. Like a 45 degree angle and just go along. Like that. There we go. Nice and simple. 45 degree angle with the brush. Gets those edges. Oh. Every time. Usually every time. Still want to be careful though. You don't want to like edge highlight something you're not supposed to. So just to give you guys that look. Just gets that definition to that. Like now the contrast to it. It looks nice. I'll do a quick one on this guy to show you how it is, and then we will call it a night. So 
So this is a 45 degree angle. and light. I know some hold my breath in for a lot of these. What you can do too is you can look at your uh, look at your warp stone glow and warp stone glow and see where it landed and kind of give you a good idea like some of the brighter spots of that warp stone glow are be where you're gonna want to edge highlight. All right, so that's just basically I'm gonna finish that off show you guys what those look like all right so we're done edge highlighting that that takes a long time so like I said you just go around the edges make it nice and clean they look really sharp now I rotate him because it's easy to do with the stick oh, I didn't get the back as well as I thought I did it's okay da -da -da. and da -da -da. See, just that nice little definition. To the light with it just looks really cool. Alright guys, so that was my basically how-to on painting Salamander's green. We went through the basing process, the wet brushing process with the uh, warp stone glow, then the edge highlighting. Uh, we used a little bit of a contrast method to show you the difference. Um, like I said, this one's a little bit brighter. And that one's a little bit more contrasty. I think they both look really good actually. Now that, now that I take a look. So I want to thank you all for joining me. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to try to put out these videos a little bit more often. I'm really working on making this, you know, a fun quarantine time, you know, so I have a bit more to do. But I also check out my Instagram, guys. It's basically at Prehistoric Painting. Um, and I have a podcast I do, too, for a, a Star Wars Legion. It's basically a, uh, like a Theory Hammer podcast where... Me and my friend uh, Tim, who's also Krabbuck on YouTube, just go over and just theorize a bunch of stuff and kind of have a fun and guessing and thinking we'll be really neat in Star Wars Legion. So guys, thanks for coming along and you have a great day.